You know, as a child, I lived in a home that was constantly shaking and breaking. It almost felt like the house was in pain. And I didn't know what I was going to wake up to each day. Was it going to be a day of memories and drama-free? Or was I going to wake up to a day of watching my back or hiding under the table in fear? Or was it going to be a day that would trick me and start off normal, leading to bruises and memories I don't want to remember? Now, my number one strength is positivity. So even as a young child, I was always looking for the silver lining. And I learned resilience quickly in the day-to-day ups and downs of my childhood. I had this natural take heart grit and grind inside of me that caused me to take heart daily. And once saved as a four-year-old on my grandmother's living room floor, I easily believed what she told me about God being my heavenly Father and watching over me. I truly, truly believed it. Over my life, I would, dis- would consider that I have become a little bit of a take heart expert. Maybe you are a take heart expert as well, but you know, I had to take heart in a home life as a child that was dark and unstable. Take heart living in so many different homes growing up, being responsible for our family home and my siblings at a young age, multiple divorces in our home, navigating my teen years and the wins and losses that come with that. You know, getting married, debt free, woohoo, with no money, woohoo. Taking heart when my husband and I were doing college here in Australia with little money and many jobs going on at the same time, just trying to make it. Losing babies over a few years, broken friendships, being far far away from all my family in New Zealand. My sister got cancer 16 years ago and still so sick from the aftermath. Seven years ago, my husband Dave had cancer and navigating that over 12 months with three kids. He's 100% cancer free now, thank you Jesus. And then that little thing we don't like to talk about, COVID, (laughs) and being a really bad teacher to my children, and then losing my purpose in it all and just trying to figure it out. And then even just the last, you know, 15 months in our church and the yo-yo of emotions and change that has come with that. The list is endless of take heart moments to navigate. We all have take heart moments and experiences. We are all in the same boat. John 16.33 is my key verse for today. I love it so much. It says this, I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. What a promise we can all relate to and need. Except for the tribulation part, right? Other translations say you will experience trouble and suffering, sorrows, experience difficulties, but... The good news in this verse is that there is a promise coming. Not only does Jesus tell us to take heart, but in other translations, take heart is translated as take courage, have great confidence, be encouraged, be undaunted, be of good cheer. Why? Because the promise is coming. He promises peace. He promises that He, Jesus, has won the battle over the world. When I think over my life and having a track record of taking heart, I wanted to share a few lessons I've learned along the way, having taken heart and gotten my heart back. The first one is be battle ready. Jesus says it. Hey, be ready. Hard things are coming, but I've got you. I've been teaching children for 22 years about prayer, worship, clinging to God, calling on God, the fruits of the Spirit, John 3, 16, Jeremiah 29, 11, miracles, the good news, the armour of God, the list is endless in the Word of God. A few years ago when I was desperately trying to take heart, I remember God whispering to me saying, Becky, the things you teach in Hillsong Kids from my Word shouldn't expire when you're 12 and leave kids ministry. My truth should become more and more vital. My truth should become your blueprint, necessary in every stage of life and the older you get. I often find myself now putting the armour of God, driving along in the car, putting it on, getting ready for the day. He has given us the keys to be ready to take heart in the battles and the blessings. I'm committed to being battle ready in the things of God and helping the children I lead do the same. Be battle ready. Number two, carve space. One of the simplest yet most powerful verses, James 4, 8. Draw near to God 
and he will draw near to you. I've had the incredible privilege of being a part of almost 20 years of Hillsong Kids camps. And at camp every year, I take some time to sit on my rock to carve my space. I've sat on that rock and put my heart out to God. I've sat on that rock, stable, joyful, dancing on the inside and rejoicing. I've sat on that rock, unstable, weeping, weary, mourning and sad. I've drawn lines in the sand on that rock. I found peace on that rock. I've trusted with everything I have on that rock. I've taken heart year after year on that rock. I implore you to carve space and find your thing in creating space with your Saviour. And I'm committed to teach the children I lead how to carve space too. Number three, and I love this one. God's promises trump lost hearts. When you lose heart, Remember that all God's promises are yes and amen, right? Yes, nothing can break them, nothing can undo them. His promises give us a hope for the future and anchors to hold on to. When He promises us in Psalm 40 verse two that He will pull us out of the pit of destruction and set our feet on a rock, He will. When He promises in Isaiah 41 verse 10 that He is with you and He will strengthen you, He will, am I right? Yes, when He promises in Isaiah 54, 10, when things are shaking around you, His covenant of peace cannot be broken. He means it. And when He promises in Psalm 91, 2, that we can confidently lean, rely and trust in Him, we can. And one of my favourites, when God says in Proverbs 3, 26, in times of crisis, He will keep my heart at rest in every situation. He will, He will, He will. I love nothing more than Sunday after Sunday, teaching the kids I lead about the powerful promises of God. And my final one, number four, pay it forward. It would be so amiss of me if I didn't take this message beyond ourselves. When your heart is settled, when your taking heart is paused, look for the souls who need you to help them take heart and pay it forward. Help others to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Your hope can spur on another person's hope. Show, Jesus, show others how you pressed into Jesus and let them see your prayers and praises. I have three children. Brooklyn is 17, Orlando is 13, and London is eight. And my whole mission in life is to help my kids learn how to take heart and to show them time and time again how to navigate this in taking heart. I want them to see me take heart and learn from my trials and celebrations. I want them to see my questions and my trusting I want them to see my seeking God and praying to God. I want them to see when I'm weak and when I'm strong. I'm just gonna invite Joella to come up. Taking heart will always go beyond ourselves. And I love that I have the privilege weekly to pass on my gold to the next generation. As a kids pastor, I would love to invite Joella to read this Psalm that reminds us to take heart. Psalm chapter 31, verse three to five. You're my cave to hide in my cliff to climb. Be my safe leader, be my true mountain guide. Free me from hidden traps, I want to hide in you. I put my life in your hand, you won't drop me, you'll never let me down. Thanks, Joanne. At the end of the day, and what it throws at us, I will still need to take heart time and time again. You will still need to take heart time and time again. And we can stand on the promise once again, John 16, 33, and I love it in the message. Listen to this. I've told you all this so that that trusting me, you will be unshakable and assured, deeply at peace. In this godless world, you will continue to experience difficulties, but take heart, I have conquered the world. I believe that take heart redemption is on its way for all of you. And he is and will turn what seems like winters into spring. Take heart. Speaking of generations, Tracy's going to come and share around honouring people's stories and their futures. 